Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly, email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. How do you define true love? Well, to my mind, true love is when it never gets old, which is why Anytime we have the Patek Philippe 5235G Regulator Annual Calendar, I will review it again, regardless of how many times I share this watch every time. Feels like the first time. This is my favorite modern Patek. So it was launched at Basel World 2011 and phased out in 2019 as the Rose Gold 5235R came into production. But that sort of overstates just how long and how voluminously the model was made. From 2011 to 2013, there was almost no production as Patek tried to overcome problems with the engineering of the movement and the exotic escapement. And even as late as 2015, there were reportedly still shutdowns in production of this model to resolve problems. So while the production period seems like it may be lengthy, actual production of this watch was fairly scarce. Now, of course, in white gold, gray gold, really, a type of white that never needs to be rhodium plated, the watch is 40.5 millimeters in diameter. It is 10.3 millimeters thick. It is 47.6 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. And then between the lugs, it has a fairly conventional 20 millimeter spacing. Taking a quick look at the watch on my wrist, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch wears well. It's very flat, and it'll slide easily under a cuff if you want to wear it with a dress watch, but it's also got sort of a sporty air with a metallic sheen. It looks like it's made all of stainless steel, so you can definitely wear this with short sleeves and short pants. I would recommend the watch for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference, and it's nicely equipped. We have a large rectangular scale alligator leather in a sort of gloss cobalt, I'd describe it, maybe gloss ultramarine, and you can see we have folded edges, a monotone stitch, calfskin on the bottom. This is a Patek Philippe factory strap in brand new condition. You can see it has Patek's pull tab spring bars, so you use your thumbnail to pop the spring bar out of the lug so you can change straps, mostly without a tool. One of the reasons I love this watch is so much about it is unique, right down to the pin buckle, which has this lovely arcing Patek Philippe vintage style logo on the pin buckle. Now right here I have a, for comparison, I have a 4897 where you can see what this buckle normally looks like. This is specific to the regulator. Also important, this watch references Patek's own history. We have these highly angular lugs jutting out from the case and the conical bezel, which is a throwback to the case design of the famed 3448 automatic perpetual calendar of the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, as well as its successor, the rarely seen 3450. So we have that lovely case, which is iconic for Patek, with a combination of polish and satination. We have three pusher adjusters for adjusting the aperture style annual calendar, and I always want to be accurate and truthful in the representative of this watch and any watch at Watchbox. Representation should show the flaws when you are talking about a pre-owned timepiece, and you can see there are some little hairlines on the watch that need to be called out, but that just means it'll be easier to wear. You won't have to worry about the first scratch. Now, as I mentioned earlier, gray gold is a type of white gold that is white all the way through. It's the good stuff. Patek has used it since at least 2006. Never needs to be rhodium plated if it does get scratched. There's another identical shade of gold underneath it. It's not like scratching past rhodium where suddenly you've got a yellow mark on the side of your watch. Calatrava cross on the crown, and the dial is distinctive. First, it's a regulator, which means we have separate displays for hours, minutes, and seconds. Second, it's an annual calendar with all aperture display. So we have the day, the date, the month, no pointer style calendar indicators. And it's a rare modern Patek Philippe calendar watch that does not include a moon phase. Now you can see that the dial features a lighter silver outboard underneath a blue printed minute track. And then it features a darker silver satination on the center dial. The logo and the city of origin have been engraved in the dial rather than printed, and then we have sunken silver white sub registers that are also blue printed and feature concentric patterns. The calendar discs are printed blue on white, which you can see here, and 
because this is a very modern Patek movement. You can see it features hacking or stop seconds. Because it's an annual calendar, it only needs to be adjusted once a year during the jump from February to March. This is Patek's original innovation, first debuted in 1996. So we have several different colors of silver and silver white engraving on the dial, blueprint, and then another feature I like, you can see how the windows for the day, date, and month, they're actually stepped with a little bit of faceting that's polished, so it's not an ugly sheer cut through the dial. There's actually a step down with an intermediate step between the plane of the dial and the plane of the disc. Now, on the back, what at first glance seems like it might be a 240 micro rotor is actually an entirely new Patek Philippe family of micro rotor automatics. This is the 31260 REGQA, meaning it's a regulator and it is an annual calendar. It is also much bigger than the old 240 micro rotor. That was under 30 millimeters in diameter. This is 33, meaning it properly fills the case back of this large modern watch. Snap case back, 30 meter water resistance, micro rotor automatic winding, 22 carat rotor, and that density allows for efficiency, but just to compound it, there's a hybrid ceramic bearing with steel races, but unlubricated ceramic balls. It beats away at a unique rate that's kind of inherent inherent to this unique Pulsamax escapement system. So you've got a balance beating away at 23,040 vibrations per hour. You will not find that beat rate anywhere else in the watchmaking world. So now if you look carefully, you can see that both the anchor and the escape wheel are made of silicon. These are technologies from the advanced research series of the mid to late 2000s. Operating unlubricated, they don't have a performance arc the way lubricated pallets and pallet wheels do. Uh, because when you have conventional pallet stones, a metal anchor and a metal escape wheel. As the grease on the escapement ages, the watch will start losing time. Because there is no grease here, it doesn't age, it doesn't turn into tar or dissipate. So there's really a very consistent timekeeping and low friction. We also have the Spiromax silicon anti-magnetic hairspring. And when you combine the Gyromax style free sprung balance with the silicon hairspring, six position adjustment, which we have here, and the Patek Philippe seal, the watch is guaranteed accurate to no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. Also important to know, this is a unique architecture. It's not just a bigger micro rotor. You can see it's been handsomely designed with this lovely crescent shape as the bridges arc down from the ratchet wheel in the barrel to the escapement. You can see that the beveling though likely started by mechanical means, has been finished by hand because it's rounded and mirrored. We have both large and small engine turning on the base plate. You can see that the locating pegs for the bridges have been black polished on the tops, these little pegs that are used to locate the bridges on the base plate. And then we have satination on the wheels, including circular satination on the ratchet wheel atop the barrel, and all screw heads have been black polished with their slots and their circumference chamfered. So a judicious blend of mechanical and manual finish, but done handsome. I particularly like this outward point where two bevels meet and the fact that Patek managed to bevel the interior of both the jewel and the screw countersinks, which is a nice little detail you don't always see. A wonderful watch and truly original, one of Terry Stern's best. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details. Oh, and one more detail I should have mentioned, automatic winding, 48-hour power reserve.